I don't claim to be an expert in the matter, but it's my understanding that running a business isn't as simple as opening up shop and waiting for the Benjamins to roll in. Not me. Money. For the most part, in fact, it's really quite difficult to keep a small business afloat. Even if you manage to create a product that people love, there's always a chance that some big corporation will roll into town and take away your fickle customer base. Or, even worse, the economy could crash. That'd be a laugh, wouldn't it? It's for those reasons, and many more, that we often find ourselves scratching our heads when it comes to peddlers in video games, because based on the business practices we've seen on display, we can't help but feel their respective stores would have all very quickly gone the way of Woolworths. Rip. For this list, we're taking a look at the very worst offenders and asking ourselves just how on Earth, or whatever planet, they've managed to stay in business for as long as they have. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game merchants with terrible business acumen. Number 10. The Happy Mask Salesman The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time It's one thing to have faith in your fellow man, but it is quite another to have the level of blind trust that Ocarina of Time's Happy Mask Salesman does. Don't get me wrong, it's lovely that this guy believes he can depend on Link to peddle his wares, but knowing just how terrible some people can be, I can't help but feel like he's setting himself up to be mugged off. For those unfamiliar with this smiley chap, if players engage with him, he'll give Link a mask to sell, with the promise that if you return with the profits, you can have another to sell. The issue is that this seems like a mighty backwards way to run a business. Best case scenario, someone's going to take off with one of your masks free, gratis, and for nothing, and worst case, they'll realise what a soft touch you are kick your head in and steal all of your goods. If the happy mask salesman really is too lazy to go out and sell his own masks, he'd be better off hiring Link in some kind of commission-based position, or better still, allowing him to purchase the masks so that he can sell them on at a profit. For just 50 rupees a month, you too can become your own boss. Number 9. The Guardian of Metal – Brutal Legend I'm not necessarily saying that I wouldn't trust Ozzy Osbourne to run a bath, let alone an establishment wherein he's required to manage money, balance his books, and keep records of his income and expenses, but... Admittedly, the Guardian of Metal from 2009's Brutal Legend... Wait, hang on a sec. What's this, uh, what's the umlaut for? Am I supposed to pronounce it brutal or brutal? Whatever. Admittedly, the Guardian of Metal from 2009's Brutal Legend is not actually heavy metal icon Ozzy Osbourne and is a fictional character in his own right, but he is both voiced and heavily based on the Black Sabbath frontman, so we're going to assume he's got the exact same experience of running a successful business, i.e. little to none. Yet, the bat-munching superstar has had a very successful music career, but we aren't convinced that penning hard rock classics and doing a lot of drugs gives one the necessary credentials to set up their own business venture. Although it probably wouldn't have fit with the general theme and aesthetic of the overall game, they'd have been much better off basing the character on someone like Sir Alan Sugar. No, you're fired! Number 8. The Merchant. Resident Evil 4. Considering the 2020 we had, it's fair to say that we all know one or two things about pandemics now. The main thing we know is that it's been a nightmare for any retailer that isn't a supermarket, and the worst hit have been, you guessed it, small businesses. It's for this reason we have to question the thinking behind Resident Evil 4's merchant opening up shop in the middle of a literal plague. Yes, he's incredibly useful to Leon and co, selling various weapons, treasures and healing items, along with firepower and capacity upgrades. Our experience with Plague Redacted over the past year, however, has taught us that, in the event of a rapidly spreading disease, the first thing to go is non-essential retail. So, while the merchant may be providing a service to our plucky protagonist, he'd almost certainly get himself closed down quicker than you could say, oh, I really need that gun, and would probably get slapped with some sort of fine for violating lockdown. Wonder if he's thought about doing click and collect. Number 7. Bellathor. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim It's widely accepted that people are clumsy, and in the confines of a small shop it's easy to accidentally walk into something and break it. Most reasonable shopkeepers accept this as the nature of the job and just get on with it, though there are the minority of cantankerous wazzocks who furnish their shops with you break it, you buy it signs. Great, I've always wanted a shattered Donny Osmond tea set. With that in mind, don't you dare step your clumsy feet into Bellathor's shop, because this angry Breton has no time for your tomfoolery. If you, 
have the audacity to knock into any of his wares or god forbid you let loose a misplaced Fusro Dar, you can be certain that Bellathor will have sent the boys round quicker than you can say arrow to the knee. We appreciate that it's frustrating when fools come blundering into your shop, but there's no need to put hits out on people just because they've destroyed a couple of knickknacks. So Bellathor, if you're open to advice, perhaps consider a bit of insurance rather than having your customers executed. It'll be far better for your public relations and probably a bit cheaper as well. Whoops! Oh god, he's coming after me, isn't he? Number 6. Marcus. Borderlands. Ah, at last, a merchant who might just be making a decent amount of money. We can't say that we necessarily support arms dealing as a chosen profession here at Team Triple Jump, but hey, you do you, my good sir. King of big personalities, Marcus can be found in various forms throughout the Borderlands series, including his own line of weapon vending machines and several brick and mortar stores. Sadly, his customer service leaves a lot to be desired, and if you're ballsy enough to ask for a refund, don't be surprised if he offers you a lead salad instead. Not only this, but owing to his aggressive business practices, he's literally had all of his competition murdered. He's pretty much the only arms dealer on Pandora, which is fine in the short term, and I imagine old Marcus is absolutely raking it in, but I have a feeling you can only arm both sides for so long before someone takes umbrage. And with Pandora's population consisting of dangerous vault hunters, megalomaniacal tyrants, psychos, and very little else, the whole venture just sounds like a recipe for, you guessed it, lead salad. Number 5. Zer. Destiny 2. If you're running a business, there are two very important things that you should always bear in mind. You need to open fairly regularly, and when you are open, people need to know where to find you. Clearly then, Zer of Destiny 2 fame has never cracked open a copy of Business for Dummies because he's flagrantly disregarded both of these pieces of advice. Available only between the hours of 9am on Fridays and 9am on Sundays, this clueless vendor can be found peddling exotic weapons, armour and various other chutchkeys and doodads. I say, can be found because he's never in the same place two weeks running, and he doesn't advertise his location ahead of time, so players will have to spend a good chunk of their day tracking down the daft git. Luckily, there are plenty of fan sites that will help players locate him each week without having to go on a merry old hunt, but it's still an annoyance. Add to the mix the fact that he only ever sells random mystery items, and you're left with a retailer that's never open, never where you expect him to be, and may not have what you want after all. Ah, oh, sod it, I'll just go to Primark. Number 4. Hadrig Amon, Diablo 3. Players of Diablo 3 will be very familiar with Hadric Amon, the friendly neighbourhood blacksmith whose wife they murdered in a basement that one time. Yeah, I wouldn't bring it up, it's unlikely to get you the friends and family discount. Jolly old Hadric can be found throughout Diablo 3, though initially in New Tristram, offering his repair, salvage and crafting services for very reasonable rates. His work is always of the highest quality, produced to your exact specifications and delivered on time for an unbeatable price. That's no exaggeration, as the only blacksmith in the game his prices are literally unbeatable. The thing you have to ask yourself, however, is this. Besides the Nephilim and his or her comrades, who is there to buy all of these weapons? He may well be the best swordsmith in all of Sanctuary, but that really doesn't matter if he's not got any customers. One can assume that he could turn his hand to other projects, such as horseshoes and farming tools, but we don't see anything of the sort listed in his catalogue of wares, so the pedant in me is going to presume he will end up starving and penniless, surrounded by a whole load of unsold pole arms. Number 3. Patches. Dark Souls 3. The first rule of customer service is that the customer is always right, and having worked in retail, I can tell you that is unequivocally not true. Most customers are, in fact, very wrong nearly all of the time, but sadly, attempting to engage any one of them in physical violence tends to result in such things as disciplinary hearings and P45s. Someone who's clearly never completed their introduction to not kicking customers in the teeth training is Dark Souls 3's Patches, and it's fair to say that his rapport with patrons leaves much to be desired. Patches can be found in the Cathedral of the Deep, where the young scoundrel will attempt to trick players into thinking that he's a knight and that he knows where to find some treasure. Tempting offer? Yes. Potentially fatal though? Also yes. I'd like to say that this is the first and last time Patches will prove to be a pain in the bum, but alas, he continues to show up throughout the game to try to cause the player grievous bodily harm. Sadly, it seems that the nearsighted Patches hasn't worked out that tricking and attempting to kill all of his customers will, at best, somewhat alienate his clientele and, at worst, leave him completely without income. If only he hadn't done it four times before. Number 2. Tommy and Timmy. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, I wouldn't wish to tarnish these adorable guys' reputation by implying that their little shop is some sort of mob money laundering exercise, but it's literally the only solution I can come up with to explain why they're still in business. 
Admittedly, Tommy and Timmy do run the only general goods store on the island, so they have the monopoly when it comes to household essentials like giant cuddly pandas and lawn flamingos, items no good home should be without. The issue comes not with what they sell, but with what they buy, because they seem to have no qualms about taking literally anything from bugs to weeds in exchange for cold, hard cash. I'm sorry lads, but no matter how many decorative porcelain tigers you sell, you're never going to be able to make back the 1.2 million bells you just traded me for 3,000 turnips. What are you even going to do with 3,000 turnips? There's only a dozen people on this island at a push and those root veggies are three days from spoilage. You're mad! Hire an accountant! Oh well. I'm fairly sure I'm due a kneecapping from Tom Nook for not paying my mortgage, so he'll almost certainly be along in a couple of days to bail you out. I'm on to you though. Number 1. Hattori. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Who else could top this list besides a man who has literally had his swordsmithing business fail so badly that he's had to turn to making dumplings? Not that there's anything wrong with making dumplings for a living, of course, and to be fair to Hattori, it wasn't completely his fault that his original venture went under, so we definitely have sympathy. Effectively bullied out of his original occupation by the dastardly Ernst Van Horn, and despite his futile attempts to save his business, humble Hattori was left to scratch a living off delicious, savoury steamed treats. Say what you will about the man, at least there's no keeping him down. Despite the relative success of his dumpling business, however, Hattori makes the somewhat risky decision to again take up smithing, employing the talents of your boy Geralt of Rivia to help him return to his beloved forge. Obviously Geralt sorts him out and saves the day, even furnishing Hattori with protection in the form of a bodyguard, but you've got to ask yourself about the long-term implications of such a move. What happens if the bodyguard decides he's not being paid enough, or, God forbid, taking are down one month and poor Hattori can no longer afford the protection. Sounds like a one-way trip back to Dumpling Town to me, my friend. Best of luck. 